So the department, the Biden administration here uh, in April of 2022, they made a quote unquote one time account adjustment that allows the Department of Education to count periods of non-payment as monthly payments needed to earn forgiveness. Uh, by doing so, the department can cancel the debt of certain affected borrower uh, borrowers under loan forgiveness programs before those borrowers fulfill conditions that Congress mandate, uh, namely make a certain number of monthly payments. And the policy is illegal because non-payments cannot count as payments. And uh, the department is essentially canceled nine billion dollars at this point, and uh, more more coming. Uh, here to discuss with us uh, is is uh, is uh, New Civil Liberties Sh uh, Alliance uh, Litigation Council, Shang Li. Shang, welcome to the program. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, we're very pleased to have you. Now, uh, talk to us a little bit about this. This one's a little bit confusing to me. I have been tracking a lot of the Supreme Court stuff that's gone on uh, about this topic, but what what's the development here, and what are you guys up against? And it's really easy to get confused because there's so many of these different loan cancellation programs. And the department has been, I think, intentionally vague about what they're doing and how they're doing it and what the statutory authority is. So many of your listeners may remember there was a big Supreme Court case where the department tried to cancel, just outright cancel, $400 billion of student loans. And the Supreme Court says you can't do that. The department cited a specific statute to do that. And the Supreme Court said no. Now, the, yeah. the department lost that one, but it isn't giving up. And it's trying to cancel more. And one of the things it's doing, it's doing, it's this thing called the one-time account adjustment. Sounds innocuous, but what they're doing is there, there are certain loan forgiveness programs that we have no problem with that are completely legal, where you pay your loans for a certain number of times. Sometimes it's 10 years, sometimes it's 20, sometimes it's 25. But you have to make monthly payments during that entire time. And once you've made all those monthly payments, you've earned forgiveness. That's what Congress said. And the remainder of your loans gets canceled. Uh, what the department has said is, well, we look back and we saw some people got forbearance, which means the, 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 the bank or their servicer says, you have an economic problem right now. You don't have to pay for a certain number of time. And obviously, th that time that they don't have to pay doesn't count as monthly payments, doesn't count toward that 10 or 20 year requirement. And the department has said, oh, this, for this one time purpose, we're going to let three or four million people count all the non-payments as payments. Well, not so fast. Congress said you're supposed to pay down your debt before you get it forgiven. And the department has, has thrown away that requirement and went ahead and prematurely canceled. Uh, I, I think this summer uh, they, they got 800,000 people for a total of about $40 billion, uh, which is quite a lot of money. And that's just the tip of the iceberg because there's another 3 million people to go. Uh, and yeah. just uh, yesterday, the department canceled $9 billion as sort of part of this for a little over 100,000 people, 125,000 people. Um, and they, they, they didn't say what statutory authority they were using. Uh, we suspect it's, it's, part of, it's all part of this kind of one-time adjustment. <laughs> it's a... It's a, it's a it, it, it's 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 Shanghai Steve Hook here. Um, Hi, how are you? It, it, good. Um, it is a uh, it is a vote buying scheme. Obviously, uh, they, they've they've gone to the well quite a few times, as you mentioned. Uh, SCOTUS knocked them down. They're back at it again. Um, but it's it's not like they're forgiving the debt. They're just transferring the debt to the U.S. taxpayer. Correct. That's right. Somebody has to pay this, and, yeah. and right so now these. Debt. These debts are debt instruments like IOUs. They're, they're negotiable instruments, you know, assets sitting in the U.S. Treasury. Uh, once, <laughs> you know, once you forgive them, that's like burning up cash uh, yeah. or burning up checks of an IOU that somebody has for you. Yeah. So, well, well, let me ask you this. Uh, is this going to end up in litigation as well? Is Are, are we going to go back to court for this or? Well, the, the New Civil Liberties Alliance, we're actually representing uh uh, the Mackinac Center and the Cato Institute in, in a challenging uh, this one-time adjustment in, in the Sixth Circuit right now. Our opening brief is actually due next week. Uh, and um, our argument is only Congress can, uh, can appropriate funds to cancel student loans. Congress hasn't appropriated these funds. The department can't go around throwing money that, that Congress hasn't appropriated uh, to, I, I guess, satisfy a preferred constituency here, uh, student loan borrowers. 
Yeah. And they can't even and they can't even cite any authority with which they're doing it. They're just saying, oh, we're going to call it a we're going to call it a one time deferment plan or whatever the hell it is they're calling it. I mean, I, what, what do you what do you think your odds are with the Sixth Circuit? Well, we're, we're I think on the merits, uh, we have a slam dunk case right now. You know, the, the complication thing, it, it, just like the Supreme Court case is the, the this complex doctrine called standing. Who has standing to sue? Uh, right. We think there, you know, we have a we have, I think, a, a good argument, but the, the concept of standing doctrine is just such in flux and there's such inconsistency uh, in the courts that it's difficult to tell. Um, so it's hard to, you know, hard to make a prediction. I, I will say that uh, that the department has taken a different track here, because remember last year when they did this with the four hundred billion dollar program, uh, they said uh, they announced it and then said, well, we're going to do it three months from now. And then that created a lot of opportunity for people to come in and sue and stop it. Uh, they, they've learned their lesson, it seems. And instead, what they're, they're, they don't make any announcements until they've already forgiven the debt. You know, they, they, they come in and say, hey, we forgave it yesterday, so it's too late to sue. Uh, that seems to be their new strategy uh, because they know, I think they know ultimately legal challenges against these sort of programs are meritorious. And so the best defense is to just... Um, it's to you to they're trying to say we're going to try to ask for forgiveness instead of permission uh because yeah. they know they're not going to get permission yeah, yeah it's easier to beg for forgiveness than ask for permission thing. yeah you guys God, it's uh, just... pulled the thought right out of my head there and and what a sick piece of lawfare that is that seems like the kind of thing that should just get you know I mean, even five ten years ago would have just got bounced out for that kind of behavior or been a, a slam dunk for an organization like yours now, uh, Shang, hold the line. We've got an inbound headline here with today's News Talk TNT Radio. TNT Radio. Live. The station, the first to broadcast. Breaking news. TNT Radio News. This is James O'Neill with a check of today's headlines. The UK is set to sign a deal with the EU's border agency to get access to the bloc's intelligence on migration. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says the leadership chaos gripping Capitol Hill will have no impact on Canada's ongoing support for Ukraine. Tuesday's unprecedented ouster of former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is fueling fear that Republican support for the Ukrainian war effort could soon evaporate. On air and on the app. I listen on the app. Stay up to date around the clock. I listen, therefore I know. Today's News Talk Radio, TNT. Shang Lee is our guest, litigation counsel at the New Civil Liberties Alliance. Shang, I'm curious, you know, we're talking about some pretty nasty lawfare here. Um, and it seems similar to me to the way that certain politicians, uh, legislators, regulatory organizations, NGOs are responding to um, other uh, Supreme Court, other SCOTUS uh, positions. I could um, go to Second Amendment and and talk about Bonta, New York Rifle and Pistol Association, Heller. You know, uh, there's been a number of things that have come out. Uh, we we could even throw in uh, the abortion topic there too. There's a number of things that have come out and said, "Hey, this is the Supreme Court's decision." And then we just see all this lawfare and and politicking happen to pop up. I mean, Gavin Newsom himself is even calling judges right-wing zealots who don't care about humans uh when when a decision is made that you know he and uh the keepers of the narrative don't agree with what do you think about the the larger you know your this case falls into this as well uh what do you think what is going on here just from a high perspective i i think there's when when you're on the wrong side of the law um there's an incentive to attack the legitimacy of of the courts uh, if you can't win there, then you say, well, the whole game is rigged. And let's remember, uh, I, I think it was uh, during President Trump's first ter- term that uh, he was criticized for calling judges, so-called judges. Uh, and, and everyone said, well, that's that's not good. You're attacking the legitimacy of the courts when, when he had a, an adverse ruling against him. Uh, and now this very same people, when they are faced with adverse rulings, are, are attacking legitimacy of the courts, and I think using harsher language than so-called judges, uh, and and it kind of shows you that maybe you know maybe the criticism initially wasn't really um, in good faith, and that uh, um, and that I think you know to be in good faith you have to really uh, see it from both sides, and you know sometimes you're going to be on the right side, and sometimes you're going to be the wrong side, uh, but it's it's not you know. It, it, there's no reason to attack the legitimacy of these judicial decisions that you sit for simple reason you disagree with them. Yeah. Well, you know, 
you've just broken some news here, uh, and that is Democrats uh, have double standards. Who would have thought? Um, <laughs> but but kidding aside, I mean, I agree with that. And I, I remember when Trump said that about these judges, and I was like, oh, he kind of stepped in it with that. Yeah. But he may have a point with his judge in New York because he's a political appointee. And he's a guy that basically came out and said he's guilty before the trial even began. Uh, the 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 attorney general, uh, you know, I don't want to we don't want to get off into that. But, you know, you get my point. Um, I, I, this is this is also reminiscent of the way if you can't get legislation passed. Regulate it. I mean, this is what o- Obama did. This, this was his standard M.O. If he couldn't get cap and trade like le- legislation uh, through the uh, through the Senate or the Congress, he would he would just enact it through the EPA. Uh, and that that's kind of what it seems like Biden is taking a page out of that book, because every time he stopped at giving these loans, paying these loans off, which I I still maintain is just a massive vote. And you know, that's pretty obvious mm-hmm. why he's doing it. But he's just going to he's going to constantly go around it. So if you, let's say, Shang, you guys win this case and and, uh, and I pray God you do in the Sixth Circuit. You know they're going to try some other trick. It, 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 they're they're going to. It's like rearranging the deck chairs every time, huh? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't put it past them. I thought this whole mess would have been over after the Supreme Court ruled pretty definitively, uh, but that hasn't stopped the administration from trying. You know, weasel around it, and there's actually an ongoing rulemaking uh, uh, through a different statute to to forgive as much debt as possible. You know, I can't even keep track of all the different different balls in the air here. Uh, but at the same time, I think we can't just sit by and let them let them, you know, let them continue doing this without any uh, any pushback. And that's why we've challenged this particular policy in the courts. And we're looking um, at other sort of uh, other programs that that uh, that do the same sort of uh, injury and challenging them as well. So yeah, what what happens? You. I'm going to be positive here. What happens when you are successful with this case is. Nine billion dollars going to go back into debt no. Unfortunately, for I mean that's it's it's very hard. I mean we can ask for it, but it's very hard and, and unlikely for courts to say, well, this nine billion and this forty billion that's already gone out the door will be pushed back. I think that's I think the right thing to do um, and legally required. But just as a practical you know matter, uh, it, it's very difficult to do that. And uh, and what we're really looking for. Uh, it's under this adjustment policy because it affects something like three or four million people, and they've they've gone through and forgiven eight hundred thousand people, but there's another three million left. And and yes, forty million dollars, billion dollars have gone out the door, but there's over a hundred billion dollars that they want to uh, you know set on fire, and and we want to stop them from doing that. Yeah, yeah. God Almighty, that's it's Amazing. just so duplicitous. Well, it I mean, really we, so... we narrowly avoided a government shutdown because of concerns about debt. Uh, and and the administration's you know I think exacerbating that problem by uh, you know destroying assets that's that's owed to the American government and ultimately the American taxpayers. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a very good point. I, I don't know. I just I, I, I'm just so disgusted by the whole uh, politicking of it. it. It's it's as if it's not their money. They don't give a rip. I, but you know, Shang, it's also it, it, the, the one thing I do feel bad about. I've got two college age daughters. One didn't go and. Uh, she's still taking her first, uh, uh, her first, uh, what, what do they call it? Lag year or whatever, uh, about yeah, like seven years gap later. Year, yeah. 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 Gap year. She's, she's on her first gap year, seven year anniversary, but she's actually doing fine. So she won't be going, but my other daughter does have a outrageously large student debt. Um, and student, uh, tuition rates have been going through the roof and, I get it. I get the, the, that people are upset about it. Uh, tuition rates are up like over 30% in the last decade or so. It's crazy. Um, yep. and, and that's largely because the government essentially took over the, the student loan uh, program uh, and wrapped it in Obamacare. And then I guess, is is that what happened? What, why, why are these students? Yeah, the government should... made student loans more since the 1990s more and more available to more and more people. And, yeah. you know, you're asking 18 year olds to make decisions, taking out hundred, two hundred thousand dollars in loans and uh, on one hand and saying to the 18 year old, well, but you should pursue your dreams. And, and without really giving them any sort of financial background and training to make that sort of decision, 
So it's it's not, you know, it, it should we shouldn't be shocked that many 18-year-olds may not make the best decision. Some do. They consider it. They 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 take loans and they say, well, I'm going to medical school. It's worth it because I'm going to reap a lot of rewards on this. Others, yeah. you know, go into an art history program and take out that level of loans and don't do so well. Uh, but they haven't had the training on it. And, and the, the right reason why tuition rates have gone up so high is because of the availability of loans to to go to university. You know, yeah. if you you gave everybody loans, free loans to buy cars, the price of cars will go up. If you give people free loans to buy computers, the price of computers will go up. It's just the the law of economics here. And so if you really want to control tuition, one way to do it would be to actually put some standards on these loans, maybe not so much. Uh, Maybe, maybe, you know, only make it available to schools that have demonstrated an ability to send their students to uh, careers that uh, that are able to let them pay back those loans, and yet we have no accountability there. And and you know, I really think there's there's a room for compromise here, where the Democrats can say we want to forgive a bunch of loans, and the Republicans say sure, but let's make schools accountable. And they can you know they can figure out some compromise, uh, but there's really no and that would be great. There's room there, but no one has an incentive to compromise and enact legislation if. The president can just go out and wipe out loans at his whim. The Democrats, yeah. why negotiate if you're the Democrats, if you know the president is going to do everything for you? God. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing, you guys. It's absolutely amazing. It's like we can all see that reform is necessary. We can all see very common sense ways to make it better. And what is the federal government doing? Uh, well, they're trying to become the the consolidation firm, I guess, for what the the whole nation, uh, you know, large swath of the nation. Uh, this would be an insane amount of money. We, we know it's a financial bubble. We've been hearing about it for years, and the, these government policies seem to be uh, very, very uh, uh, odorous, <laughs> yeah, onerous. Yeah. You know, just uh, odorous and odorous. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All yeah, right. Well. well uh, Sugar daddy. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just going to say exactly. big, big daddy, big sugar daddy government. Right, right. Well, Shang Li again from New Civil Liberties Alliance. Uh, keep up the good work, and you'll have to come back and let us know how Absolutely. this goes. Let, yeah, keep, you know, you're 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 sticking a a large wedge in the levee here, and we appreciate what you're doing, and best of luck thank with you. your fight, and thank you for right joining on, us right here on today's News Talk TNT Radio. Give me a minute. 